welcome to our Christmas Day service. Happy Christmas. I am the Reverend Yvonne Pearson and the Superintendent Minister here in the Dane and Trent circuit. I especially hope this year that you will feel the joy and the love, the hope and the peace of the Christ child with you. Our Chair of District, the Reverend Helen Kirk, is going to give us a welcome. But just before that, we will light our Advent ring. On this Christmas morning, we light our white candle to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Clear shining light, Mary's child. Your face lights up our way. Light of the world, Mary's child. Dawn on this special day. Jesus is the light of the world, a light, a light no, no darkness, darkness can put out. Hello. There have been many headlines about Christmas being cancelled. Well, certainly uh, our Christmas is this year will be very different compared to other years, but Christmas will never be cancelled. God still makes his home among us. Our frail humanity is still made sacred through the incarnation and the light of the world still shines and will not be overcome. So this Christmas, different though it no doubt will be, may you know the presence of Emmanuel, God with us, in all of your homes, in your Zooms, in your communities and in that presence may each of us find hope and strength thank you for all of the ways in which you have continued to be faithful through this time and may i wish you a joyful a hopeful a peaceful christmas and may we look forward to 2021 in his name amen We're going to sing the first of our carols now. Come and join the celebration. Jesus Christ, may we come to worship you with the shepherds, proclaim you with the angels, seek you with the wise men, offer ourselves to you with Joseph and Mary, 
and rejoice in your love, Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Jesus, Son of Mary, forgive us the times we are slow to respond and obey your call. Forgive us for not always worshipping from our hearts and with our whole being. Forgive us that when we have met, we do not always go away, praising and proclaiming your presence with us. Forgive us and come once more and make your home in our hearts. Come, let us adore you, Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us share in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. While shepherds watch their flocks by night, all seated on the ground, an angel of the Lord came down. And glory shines around. They're singing our song again. It's amazing that, all these years on, they're still singing about us. I mean, we were only ordinary people. I want to know how they knew about our socks. It's not like our washing was interesting. That's oral tradition, that is. Things stick in people's minds. Stories get passed on. We told people what we saw. They told other people. The mother who stored it all up in her heart, she told someone else, and so on. So if someone wrote it down, and other people copied it, then it got printed, then put on a floppy disk and CD I wrote wish it. I never asked. Even so, we were just ordinary people, minding our own business. And our sheep. Yes, she ordinary shepherds minding our sheep. But what we saw wasn't ordinary. Those angels. The music filled the air and our ears and our hearts. Yeah, it was mind-blowing. It was before fireworks and laser shows and Sky TV, before telephones and spaceflight and video wall satellite links. Seeing all that was unexpected. Scary. Awesome. Extraordinary. Yeah, yeah, OK, but the stable was ordinary, with animals and hay and stuff. In the cold night, you could see the animals' breath in the lantern light. Oh, and a baby. That was ordinary. People are babies all the time. There's quick little breaths as he slept, and then when she unwrapped him to change him, there's little, there's little fingers, perfect and miniature. And that cry. But don't you see? That's it. The ordinary became special. The promise and potential for life and love in every baby became the hope for eternal life in God's love in that baby. Ordinary life became special because he shared in it. Ordinary blokes like us became special because we were there and willing to go and look. That's what Jesus does, makes the ordinary special. That's what holy means, that is, the ordinary being special. So it's a shame when the special becomes ordinary. When tinsel and turkey become a chore. When paper and parcels mean more than the love that gives them. And the special wonder of everyday life that's lost in Christmas Moosak. We, we wish you a holy and happy Christmas. While shepherds watch their flocks by night, all seated on the ground, an angel of the Lord came down and saw his Their flocks by night, all seated on the ground. The angel of the Lord came down. The angel of the Lord came down, and glory shone around, and glory shone around, and glory shone around. Fear not, city, for mighty. 
Nativity by the Reverend Rachel Dale. Mary was sitting in her garden with a cup of tea and a piece of banana bread. She had just finished lockdown chores and had even had time for a, a little Joe Wicks PE session. So she had a little bit of free time before her Microsoft Teams meeting at 11. As she sat, suddenly there was angels standing two metres away. He didn't have a mask, but it's okay because they were outdoors. The angel told her she was to have a baby. He would be God's son, the light of all people of the world. And she was to call him Jesus. Mary was a little confused at first, but then everything is a bit confusing at the moment. She wondered if this was fake news, but after Googling it and praying a lot, she realised that it really was God's plan. And so she said yes. She had to tell her fiancé, Joseph, though, and he wasn't best pleased. At least not until the angel paid him a visit as well. Don't worry, Joseph, said Mary, said to Mary. We can bring the wedding forward. After all, the bands have already been read. We'll need to cut down the guest list, but we can live stream the service to everyone on Facebook. A few months went by. Lockdown was eased a little and then was tightened again. And it was almost time for the baby to be born. The Prime Minister said that Mary and Joseph needed to go to Bethlehem to be counted. Even though last week the PM had also said they shouldn't make unnecessary journeys. Which confused them again. They wondered and wondered and wondered what to do. But they knew that if they didn't get counted they wouldn't be able to get 
Universal Credit. And with the carpentry business struggling, they really needed the help. So they agreed reluctantly to go, even though Bethlehem was in a higher tier than Nazareth. They would decided that they would be safer to avoid public transport. So they went by donkey instead. If anyone stopped them, they would say they were doing their allotted exercise. <laughs> when they got to Bethlehem, it was busier than they'd expected for a little, little town in lockdown. No wonder the R number was so high here and higher than home. They tried to find somewhere to stay, but it was hopeless. The first inn they came to had closed. The second inn was open, but unfortunately was only doing takeaways which you needed to pre-book online and then collect from the car park at a set time. They were really tired as they approached the final inn. We're open, said the innkeeper, but we're full of key workers who are away from their families. Mary was close to tears. She was so tired and the innkeeper noticed her eyes filling up. But I can see how tired you are, said the innkeeper. How about the garage round the back? It'll be quiet and you'll be safe there for the night. So Mary and Joseph, and of course the donkey, settled down for the night. And in the middle of the night, the baby was born which meant that Joseph could be there, which was good. He couldn't have been there, could he, if the baby had been arrived in the maternity ward. At least the garage was COVID secure. They called the baby Jesus, just as the angel had told them to. And they placed him in a wooden crate, wrapped in a blanket. There were some shepherds in the fields nearby, watching their sheep. After all, they couldn't work from home, could they? They'd been in a bubble since the second lockdown began and were watching I'm a Celebrity on their phones with a wry smile. They knew just how cold the hillside could get at night at this time of year. All of a sudden, a heavenly host appeared. Well, not quite a host, <laughs> more a heavenly trio appeared, standing one metre plus with mitigations. And not quite singing either, more of a muted humming behind their visors. The shepherds were used to hearing things from across the fields, though, and so they had no problem making out what the angels were singing. A baby had been born. He would be their king. And they could meet him on Zoom. After a bitter tussle with their rural broadband, they managed to connect. They could see the baby king, but they couldn't hear anything. And they weren't sure whether you could tell the king's mum that she was on mute. It was soon all sorted and they were able to sing to the new baby because you can still sing on Zoom. How amazing was that? Then they Zoom waved goodbye for quite a long time and left the meeting. Quite a long way away, uh, not part of the travel corridor, there were three kings. A star had told them about the king. The angel would have had to have spent a long time in quarantine had he gone to there. They made the journey to Bethlehem, walking at a safe distance from one another, only stopping occasionally at Greg's for a vegan sausage roll. 
They didn't want to travel by camel. Camels had been super spreaders of the MERS virus a few years ago. And so the kings thought they'd better be safe than sorry. Llamas were a pretty cool replacement though. Everyone loves llamas. When they got to Bethlehem, they found the garage. They sanitised, scanned and test and trace IQ code on their apps. And one at a time, they were able to go in and see the new baby, Jesus, who was safely tucked up behind a perspex screen. They text Joseph the Hermes tra tracking code for their gift. These were due in a couple of days and would need to be left 74 hours before opening. Finally, they bowed down before Jesus and said goodbye. Then each whipped out a handy pack of antibacterial wipes to make the garage door handle safe for the next visitor. And the baby? He smiled and went back to sleep. Well, that's what babies do, don't they? Of course, some of the details would be different if Jesus were born this year and not in the first century. But the truth of Christmas, the importance of Christmas is still the same. Yesterday, today and tomorrow. A heavenly king, born into our earthly mess. A shepherd king, for kings and for shepherds. An eternal king, promising eternal life for each of us. May the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. We come to share in our time of prayer with others. I'm going to invite you, when you see the response on the screen, to join in the dark print. I will be saying, light who lightens us all, your response shine in our lives. Let us pray. Lord, we greatly rejoice in your presence among us. We come to bow with the shepherds, to kneel with the wise men, to adore with Joseph, to hold you in our hearts with Mary. Let your church proclaim your glory and your love. We pray for pastors and shepherds of your flock, all who go out in mission, all who are involved in outreach. May we reveal you as the light to lighten all people. Light who lightens all, shine in our lives. Lord, we remember with sadness the divisions of our world, a world not at peace, where people are misused and often scorned. We remember the places of war and violence. Lord, may the nation come to know that peace which only you can give. We pray that we learn to live together in harmony and fellowship. Light who lightens all, shine in our lives. Lord, we give thanks for family life, for our homes and for those who have cared for us. We think of those that we're not able to meet over Christmas and bring them to you in our prayers. We pray for children that are not wanted, or who are denied love. We pray for children who've been taken into care, 
for the abandoned, the abused and the ill-treated. We pray for all who have cared for us in these challenging times. Light who lightens all, shine in our lives. Lord, we especially remember all who are lonely this Christmas, all who are troubled or sad, all who are unable to enter into the fullness of joy through sickness or bereavement. We pray for parents anxious about their children. We remember all who are in the shadow and fear of death. Light who lightens all, shine in our lives. Lord, we remember all who have entered into joy and peace in the glory of your kingdom. We just name those we know of now in this moment's quiet. May they rejoice in your presence and your love. Light who lightens all, shine in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Zoom, zing, zing, zoom, zing, zing. to share this Christmas Day service with you all again. I do hope that you will find the joy and comfort of Christmas as Christ comes to make his home with you. Go with God's blessing and with God's peace. Amen.